this is Russ. Hey, I'm back out on the road again. Where are we going today? Yeah, we're going to Bussy Woods. What am I riding? The Free Deer Eden. Take a guess what we're gonna do when we're at Bussy Woods. Yeah, we're gonna do some fishing. So I have the outfitted Free Deer Eden with a stool. <laughs> yeah, I have a stool attached to this this time so I can sit there and go fishing. So I don't have to actually uh, stand the entire time. So let's see, how far do we got to go? Uh, we got another three miles to get to Portillo's. We always use Portillo's and Rolling Meadows as our mark point. That's how I get to know where to head towards. You gotta have an address. If you just simply said Bussy Woods, it would be tough. Okay, this guy's letting me go, so we're gonna go. Um, yeah, Bussy Woods is pretty large. If you just said Bussy Woods, it could drop you anywhere. So I'm meeting some friends there. We're gonna do a little bit of fishing in the same area that we always go to when we're at Bussy Woods. Well, it's not always the same, but the last time we went to there, I gave them directions of how to get there um, because I scouted it out for them last time. I took the bike out there, found the entrance point to the parking lot that's closer for them so they don't have to walk that long distance. Now, last time I was out there, as you know, I took a mobility scooter. I didn't ride that all the way there. It's in my car. It's always in the trunk of my car. So I took the scooter. They walked over to the area and I uh, scooted over to the area. I do that because we carry a lot of things with us. And as you know, my leg and, and knees aren't the strongest in the world. It's just easier. So this time I told them I'm going to ride the bike, meet them there. Hopefully they find the right spot. I gave them directions. I even made a video for them. So if they can't find it, that's their problem at this point. <laughs> now that they should be able to find it. It's pretty easy to do. So anyway, uh, this time to try my luck, I brought a couple of tilapia fillets. Man, that stuff is expensive for what it is. I'm telling you. They only give you like five fillets. You know how small a tilapia is, right? Five fillets is like $3.99. Should have bought the non filleted version, but then you got to buy a bunch and I didn't want to buy a bunch because I don't want to eat a bunch of tilapia. So I took two fillets and brought it with me. So I'll just cut off a section, a little bit of section, put it on a jig, and then uh, toss it in there. We'll see if that, uh, if that gathers any uh, interest from the fish. The last time I was there, I just used the uh, artificial um, plastic things, plastic worms, plastic whatevers. Didn't get any interest. So we'll see if we're any, if we're any bit luckier this time. Let's see what the speed says. 16, 15, 15. My thing says 16. So we may be off by about a mile per hour. I tend to trust those radar detectors more. I tend to think they're probably a little bit more accurate. It's okay. It's close enough. All right, so anyway, I, uh, I started the recording a little bit later this time. I did pedal most of this ride to getting here. What I'm trying to do is conserve the battery as much as I can. But I see I'm already down to 87%. And uh, trying to conserve it so in case we decide to go to lunch, I'll have some battery to get me over to Costco. So where we're going is uh, Bussy Woods is actually in Elk Grove Village. Costco is actually in Schomburg. It's not that far, it's like maybe a mile or two away, something like that. But still, uh, if you don't have enough battery to get there, I won't have enough battery to get back, right? So, uh, 
no second battery so far <laughs> so we have to kind of conserve what we have otherwise no lunch for us yeah not that uh, it's good for me anyway as you know I usually end up getting a hot dog or something but even if we go the question remains as to uh, what am I going to do with the bike I didn't bring a lock with me I think the best thing to do is if they decide to go they will need to uh, get a hot dog for me and bring it back and then we'll have to eat it outside I think that's really the only thing we can do otherwise they can go without me all right now I didn't take the sidewalk as they recommend because sometimes they don't cut the uh, they don't cut the bushes over there so you end up getting hit by the bushes so I decided just to take the street and say forget it get into the left turn lane turn <laughs> a little bit easier that way Now the thing is, uh, unless you're familiar with how to ride on the street, you probably don't want to do the things that I do. It took me a while to get used to riding the streets, how to ride so that uh, people see me better. Um, I, think, I think a lot of the times, you know, people always say that uh, the cars are at fault hitting the, the, the bike riders. Sometimes the riders are at fault. I have to say that sometimes they don't watch out for themselves so you really have to kind of got to pay attention as to what's going on assume the worst and then uh, ride accordingly so what I've been doing is pedaling and throttling um, as, as I'm getting tired out because uh, as you know I don't usually pedal unless I'm off camera simply because I tend to be winded. Now, an interesting comment came in the other day saying that um, the gentleman had watched my videos, uh, some earlier videos, and he says that he could tell, he says that you have definitely lost weight and you don't sound as winded as you're pedaling. That's true. <laughs> I don't sound as winded as I'm pedaling. All right, let's turn here. And that's only because, uh, you know, when you're heavy, every little bit of extra effort uh, really puts a taxing blow on you. Yep, I've noticed that uh, since the weight loss has happened, I'm able to do more things. Um, I'm not as tired out. So yeah, so I could pedal more. Now when I first got the bike, when I first got my first e-bike, I pedaled quite a bit, but I wasn't on camera that much, and I know I was huffing and puffing as, as I'm pedaling, but my, my intention was to fix my knee, remember? The knee replacement? And so um, I had to pedal. I did so much pedaling, we did over, well, how many miles? Over 2,500 miles on the first year? I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I was shocked myself how many miles I put in. But uh, I was doing things like uh, 25, 30 miles at a time every time I went out. And uh, I don't do that quite, uh, quite so much anymore. I, I'll usually ride anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour now. But back then I do two, three hours. Yeah. But the whole point was getting the knees moving. So, and it has helped a lot. Now, I have noticed that the knee replacement videos are still picking up. People are still watching them because everyone gets knee problems every now and then and they search uh, YouTube and then they find the Russ is Right channel. Sometimes the guys don't look and they don't realize that uh, you're talking a video. <laughs> How long have I had my knee replacement done? Almost five years now, right? And they'll tell me, Yo, you need to do this and do that and do this and try out this thing and that thing. Well, I appreciate that, but yeah, it's five years ago. <laughs> Now it took two years for me to get uh, get to the point where I um, was able to get to about 120 degrees of flexion. That's your bending of your knee and zero degrees of extension so you can uh, walk better. I don't know if I'm gonna make this. We'll, we'll hope we can. And it looks like we can, so we will. So uh, yeah, it took me a while. All right. And so, uh, anyways, I usually respond back, uh, thank you so much, but uh, it's been almost five years since my knee was replaced. And then realistically, about 
three years, I've been um, doing better. The first two years were really bad. I had a really bad uh, knee replacement happening. Let's move over here. And so, uh, so yeah, we still get people looking at the knee replacement videos. And I appreciate that because uh, I made all those videos to help other people as well. So I'm glad that they're still getting benefit from it. There's a car behind me, so I'm gonna move forward so he can uh, go ahead and make his right turn. So where are we at? We're at 83% on our battery. Now I know I did better than this before. I could have sworn I had something like 76% uh, left and I've gone to Bussy Woods and back. So I don't know what the deal is why I'm dropped so far. I even actually charged up the battery before I left. Made sure that that charger sewed green. Then I unplugged it. Alright, let me, let me lower the pedal assist. Um, there's only three pedal assist levels on this bike. It is a torque sensor bike. I was riding mostly on pedal assist level two until I got to areas where I felt like I needed to compete a little bit with the traffic and then I moved it to three. And it's possible that that's what drained the battery a little bit more. And like I said, when I'm tired, I'll throttle it. But when I was throttling, I'll try to stay between 12, um, 15 to 18 miles per hour, something like that. So I'm not throttling super hard. All right, let's go up here because I don't know whether I'm going to make this light in time. Because the light is still there, so which means I should be able to go through it. Yep, we made it through. Good. This whole trip, I didn't have too many stops. All right, let's, let's, let's get rid of this uh, map because we don't really need it anymore. All right, so I'm meeting my friends at 10. What time is it now? 9.42. So by the time I actually get to the location, they should be there or at least close to the time of getting there. Now, I don't know whether they want to be on camera or not, so I probably won't put them on unless they want to. So I think what we'll do is if I catch anything, it's always noisy underneath the viaduct. Uh, if I catch anything, I'll put some uh, photos up for you guys to see it. Now I know you guys have uh, mentioned, uh, you know, uh, well, you need a little bit of help in fishing. No, actually I do fish and I do catch things. I just don't catch things as often as I should. I actually do better out on Lake Michigan where we catch some really big salmon. I put some photos up before of the salmon and the brown trout. Um, those are big fish. I mean, you're talking you know, 30 inches or more on some of those fish. How big was the biggest one I had? 36, I think, something like that, 36 inches. Something like 19 and a half pounds, something like that. They're, they're pretty big fish. The fish out of, uh, out of uh, Bussy Woods, they have had muskies out of here. People have uh, reported muskies that they've caught. But uh, most of the stuff we catch out of here are really small fish, you know, panfish, some, some bass. You might catch a pike. You might, you know, they're, you know, they're, not, they're not like salmon. <laughs> but that's okay. Something's better than nothing. So, uh, yeah. The thing is, coming into Bussy Woods, you know, you're thinking you're, you're gonna hear all the cicadas, but uh, yeah, I don't hear anything yet. Now, it's supposed to get kind of warm today. I think it's supposed to get into the mid 80s. And it will rain, but it won't rain until about 6 p.m., so they say. I just hope it doesn't rain on me because I have no way of getting out of there because I, I got a bike. I'd have to bike it back. Well, I'm a little tired out right now because I had been pedaling most of the ride here. I would say three quarters of the ride I pedaled. 
still sniffling. I, I tell you, I think I'll be sniffling every time I'm, <laughs> I'm out here talking to you guys. I think even the summer I'll be sniffling. It's just the way I am, I guess. I don't like it. I'm sure you don't like it either. Well, here's an interesting thing. You know, as we're talking about cicadas, I did go on Facebook and there are cicada groups. <laughs> so I joined one of the cicada groups. Not that I'll post anything there. I just wanted to see photos from other people. Man, some of these people, they have cicadas so much. I mean, they're literally, they're walking on them. There's so much covered the entire streets and everything. I mean, it's terrible. Yeah, I don't want that. But I do hear them in here. Not as loud as I thought it would be, but I definitely hear them. Okay, now we hear them. I, I really think it uh, depends on where it is. Now, some things that I learned on that uh, cicada group, somebody asked uh, whether whether if their neighbors had cicadas, whether they would get them. And people were saying that they don't migrate, meaning they don't move. If they were born there, they're gonna stay in that area. They're not, they're not moving anywhere. So which means uh, it's a possibility if you don't have cicadas, you might not get any. I'm okay with that. <laughs> we don't have lots of trees really too, where we are and so, um, I mean, other neighbors have it, we don't, but uh, still, I, I haven't heard it in our neighborhood. The other day, I took a ride out to some other neighborhoods and I could definitely hear them. Some were pretty loud. Now my friend got some cicadas last time and tried fishing with it. Didn't catch anything. <laughs> they said that um, the cicadas might be good for bass fishing. Eh, whatever. I brought fish. Might be still frozen, we'll see. The thing is, is that I think a lot of times if you have a little bit of scent, you know, from either live bait or something like cut bait. I think you do a better, you have a better chance. That's, that's what I think, but we'll see. Now you might hear some rattling and that's because on the front basket here, I have um, a tackle box. Uh, let me see if I can pull it out here. Yeah, the tackle box full of, uh, full of um, crankbait. For those who fish, you know what I'm talking about. But crankbait are essentially artificial uh, baits that, that look like fish. <laughs> I mean, it's plastic. It's got hooks on them, of course. And a lot of times uh, what you're hearing is you're hearing the hooks kind of rattling around inside that box. And some of them have like little rattles in there. So it kind of makes noise when you uh, retrieve, kind of attracts the fish. I always thought that would scare the fish more than anything, but you know, they have crankbaits, uh, they have things called rattle traps, <laughs> which essentially is designed to rattle while you're retrieving. Yeah, I always thought that would scare them. Apparently not. Some of them, uh, I guess, purposely do it to get attention. A lot of times when we were uh, fishing during the, um, during the, um, um, fall season for salmon we'd leave at like three in the morning yeah really we'd leave like three in the morning head up to Wisconsin drive like an hour and a half hour 45 minutes to get up there then we fish up in uh, Racine sometimes Kenosha Racine's a little farther and uh, we've done pretty well up there you know not perfect we always uh, have our days where we didn't catch anything uh, but my friend Fishing Jim, I call him Fishing Jim because we have a number of friends named Jim. Fishing Jim and I would you know, go fishing up there. Uh, yeah, I dr he'd drive towards my area. You know, we don't live near each other. He'd drive towards my area, then I would take the car, my car, and then we'd drive up to Wisconsin. So it was always good to have a fishing buddy with you, somebody in the car with you. But, you know, sometimes at, at 3 in the morning and you're going through Wisconsin, you know, there's no lights in some of the areas that you're driving, it's like pitch black. 
<laughs> a little scary. You're going into unfamiliar areas, right? So we'd get out there and then we'd fish uh, uh, at uh, Racing Harbor. And when you're fishing off the pier and like, sometimes you see the fish, you, sometimes you see the salmon, but they're not interested. So uh, most of the salmon aren't really there to feed during the fall. They're usually there to spawn and, you know, they're coming back to die, essentially. I mean, if, if you wait too long, the fish could uh, be so bad you don't even want to eat them. So you have to be able to catch them early enough. It was usually like uh, end of August. Oh, I see a cicada flying around. End of August, um, September, October time frame, something like that. Yeah, earlier in the in the year, during summer, it's too warm. The, the water's too warm, the salmon don't like it. So they go deep. And then of course they go deep means they're further out. And so the only way you can catch it is on a boat. We have chartered uh, fishing boats before. And uh, I don't know, what do we pay? Like 100 bucks, 110? I don't know, well, it's something like that per person. You get like five or six guys together, and then uh, we charter the boat, and then the captain will bring you out, and then uh, you fish off the boat. Now the thing is with fishing off the boat, we always felt that, well, we're really not doing anything. The captain's really rigging up everything. We're not doing a thing. Really all we're doing is uh, reeling it in. If they, if they catch something, they reel it in. So uh, really, we, <laughs> we don't do anything but reel things in. Let me see here. U.S. Customs, you have a U.S. Postal Service package being cleared. Yeah, well, that is possible. I am where, I mean, I'm expecting something. But the thing is that sometimes when you do get text messages like that, Sometimes it's not legitimate. So I don't really know if it's legit or it isn't. The thing is, I am expecting something and it would have to clear US Customs. <laughs> so now the dilemma is, do you answer that text message or do you not? Now I do have a tracking thing for that package. So I'm gonna have to check the tracking to see if it actually indeed has shipped. If it has, then it might be a legitimate one. If it hasn't, it might be spam. I'll take a look at it later. Yeah, I am expecting some things to come in. Um, and they are from out of the country. And you know, a lot of the stuff I get are from out of the country. These bikes are from out of the country. However, the bikes uh, usually have a US warehouse, right? You know, companies like Magicycle, Free Deer, all these companies, uh, Hemiway, they have U.S. warehouses. So what happens is they ship it to the U.S. warehouse and the U.S. guys uh, send it off to you. Thank you. But on occasion, um, we might be getting some packages in for the Anything Goes Monday videos. And I am expecting two things to come in for that. So I would tend to think that might need to clear US Customs. All right, we're down to 76%. See, that's the weird thing. Like I said, last time, I, uh, the very first time I came out here with the Free Dare, I think I still had I think I, I was down to maybe 65, 70%, something like that, and I was home already. So uh, I've been eating a battery or something. is happening um, not much <laughs> oh more bikes are coming in yeah got confirmation oh, little chipmunk 
got confirmation that uh, I was supposed to get a FedEx package today, another bike was supposed to come in today, but I didn't see anything on their app saying that uh, they were out for delivery. Every time they tell me it's uh, coming in Wednesday, today is a Tuesday by the way, uh, they'll say, but it's early, it's coming in on Tuesday. I don't know, I never believe them. So sure enough, I waited till the morning. I said, okay, it doesn't say that it's coming in. If it doesn't say out for delivery, it's not out for delivery. I've, I've known that. So it says it's in Chicago. It went from, uh, well, I don't remember the name of the other town in, in Illinois, but that, that town's only like an hour away from us. I looked it up. Then it made it to Chicago. I'm surprised it didn't just go straight to Wheeling. Wheeling is usually the, uh, the point where they, uh, where they put the bikes to and then they then they deliver to us because Wheeling is only a couple towns away from us and um, it didn't say anything about Wheeling so I said okay if it's not at Wheeling it's not coming in because I think wherever it is in Chicago it's got to hit that then it's got to hit Wheeling then it's got to come here so I'm guessing it'll be in tomorrow now, I did put a vacation hold for a couple of days uh, because I have things to do and I can't be around to accept the package. So if it doesn't show up by tomorrow, <laughs> uh, it's going to be pushed off until maybe Saturday at this point. So, but this is, this is the issue I have with uh, receiving packages, especially FedEx packages, uh, because all these bikes come from with FedEx. I don't know why. Maybe they have a higher weight limit. I have no idea. This bike is over 100 something pounds with the packaging. All right, we have fished this area before, right here by this, uh, this little bridge area. I've never had any luck. <laughs> so we're gonna go to the other area. There's a couple areas you can fish. Uh, Bussy Lake is pretty large, kind of spreads out all over the place, so you got lots of places you can go to. But uh, the place that we're going to is kind of secluded. I don't think ever a lot of people know about it. I mean, some people do, of course, but um, I think a lot of them fish the other areas, but not this one. So we kind of like this one because it's 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 kind of secluded. It's also um, got a little bit of shade uh, at least during the morning <laughs> so most people would take a left over here we take a right and we're really close all right let's see uh, let's see if the others are there yet what time is it uh, it's almost 10 so they might be there by now anyway uh, I'll end up signing off in case they don't want to be on the uh, on the video, but uh, I'll probably come back and give you an update report. But uh, okay, a little bit of traffic here, so we got to wait a little bit here. Uh, they might be here. Let's see. Yeah, there might be. I see some people there. All right. Anyways, I'll come back and give you guys a report. See how we do. There's a lot of people here. How you doing? I see Gail here already. What's up? All right, let me show you guys real quickly what I'm using. So I have a slip bobber. Let's see if we can pull this up here. Put it in front of the camera so you can see it here. 
have a slip bumper right here. So this goes up and down. There's a bead right here. Then there's a little stopper. Let's see if you can see that. See that little uh, green thing here. So you can slide this up and down the line so you can determine how how far down your bait will go. And what I did is I hooked up a little bit of tilapia. Yeah, a little bit of tilapia. So I bought some tilapia. Stick it in here. There you go. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart. It usually um, <laughs> can fall all over the place. All right, let's go ahead and uh, cast this out there. I have not had any luck. I've been fishing for a while already, and and yeah, nothing. So uh, we may end up with nothing again. I have my stool, so I'm sitting on the stool. Let me show you the stool. <laughs> Let me back up here. There's the stool. I just sit on that bike is back here. <laughs> so I have a feeling it's going to be an unproductive day again. There was a number of people who were out here when I rolled up, but I don't think those guys caught anything either. There was a, some guys out on a boat. I don't know if they were successful or not. But yeah not too active in fishing. Usually this is why I like fishing for salmon out in um, Lake Michigan because we'll cast that and reel it back and cast it and reel it back. So there's always some action, something going on. Uh, fishing with slip bobbers, you just it's, just, it's a waiting game. Not as interesting to me. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys for today. If anything happens, I'll turn the camera back on, but otherwise, appreciate you guys watching up to this point. We'll try again another day if, if we don't catch anything. Talk to you guys next time.